Good morning, everyone. My name is Daisy. I'm a grad student in the CS department doing research about information retrieval and extraction. And today, the topic of my presentation will be frontiers in information extraction over clinical narratives. So here's the outline. First of all, I'll help you to understand what are clinical narratives. And then I will address the problem regarding clinical narratives and the motivations of extracting information from uh, clinical narratives. It is not surprising that to address the problem, there are a lot of challenges. I will then review the literature about project research methodologies, their accomplishments and their limitations. Of course, I will also show you some other alternative and future research directions. And finally, I'll finish with insights and reflections. So first, what are clinical narratives? Um, usually, when a patient goes to the hospital, there is a documentation as the result of the encounter between the patient and their health care system. So the documented information is called uh, patient-specific information. This kind of information usually uh, contains two portions, the structured portion and the unstructured portion. Structured portion usually refers to the, the lab results, uh, vital signs, and, and so forth. This kind of information is usually coded in charts. And also there is an unstructured portion. That kind of information is usually like medical history, uh, physical report, radiology report, and so forth. This kind of information is not coded in charts. And instead, they are uh, written as free text. And what we usually call the clinical narratives is just the, uh, the unstructured portion of the uh, patient-specific data. So now let's look at the problems with the uh, uh, patient-specific data when they are used for computer applications, and also uh, the motivations of extracting information from clinical narratives. And the problem with the uh, patient-specific data is that although it has a, a structured portion, and that portion is really easier to be understood by the, uh, the, the computer systems, however, that portion of uh, patient-specific data is not rich enough and cannot capture the complexities of the patient information and the cause of the patient's disease. Uh, actually, the rich facts and knowledge are hidden in the clinical narratives because they are they're written as a freestyle. You can write as much as, much as you want. However, due to the, uh, the free text nature of the clinical narratives, um, their semantics are usually unrecognizable by computer applications. And at this point, uh, it is uh, important that information extraction techniques will be required to provide semantic encoding of the narrative data. So to, uh, to help you understand the importance of uh, information extraction techniques used for uh, clinic systems, I will show you an application example uh, in the radiology department. Suppose that this department contains uh, uh, repositories of data, uh, such as the, uh, the unstructured data and the encoded data. A uh, radiology report is the uh, unstructured data, and uh, that is also what we call the, uh, the narrative data at this point. And both pharmacy and laboratory records are coded in charts. Now we want to develop, um, develop a database system, which is the clinical database, that can uh, capture uh, all the, uh, the, uh, the encoded information, the facts and the real knowledge, and to be used for further analysis. Of course, it does not have big problems to uh, uh, capture the encoded data. However, the database schema cannot recognize the unstructured data, which are written as, uh, as free text. Therefore, at this point, it is very important to uh, and uh, information extraction component that could translate the unstructured free text into uh, the, the uh, coded semantic unit and make the unit could be uh, captured and recognized by the uh, database schemas. And when all the data are encoded and captured by the database, those data could be easily used by the uh, medical logic modules for further analysis. And also, those data could be used to trigger alerts, care plan reminders, and also be, be helpful for doing results review and retrospective research, and so forth. Now, we have already known the importance of information extraction. But you might, might want to ask, what does information extraction exactly do? Basically, the goal of uh, information extraction, or called IE techniques, is to identify facts and or knowledge from text collections. Um, 
The uh, information extraction term might remind some people about another term, information retrieval. Actually, these two kinds of uh, techniques are close relatives. But information retrieval is different from information extraction in that information retrieval usually does not uh, uh, do further in the, in the text. It simply returns a set of uh, documents that is related to a certain topic. So, for, uh, for example, if uh, we post a query, the use of amp selling, uh, information retrieval will take uh, in the input of uh, text collections and return um, a whole set of documents like this, which is talking about uh, amp selling. However, information extraction will dig inside the, the text and return just a short message, which is the fact that can exactly answer this question. And so from now, you might uh, notice that actually information extraction techniques do not stand alone. And they actually draw techniques from many areas, such as information retrieval, natural language uh, processing, and other artificial intelligence techniques. Information retrieval will help to narrow down the amount of information for further processing. And natural language processing will translate the data into semantic units. And now let's look at the, uh, the challenges of, um, in the information extraction processing of clinical narratives. Um, uh, one of the biggest challenges is that there is a high accuracy requirement. Um, because we know that the information to be extracted from the clinical data will be directly uh, applied to specific patients. Therefore, if there are any uh, errors in the facts extracted, there could be severe consequences to the, uh, to the patient because of the clinical decision could be made totally wrong. Uh, despite the, uh, the high accuracy requirement, it is actually very difficult to process the uh, clinical data because um, uh, the main challenge is that clinical narratives are not well-edited articles or books or journals. They are actually written quickly in telegraphic elliptical styles. Therefore, there could be a lot of uh, grammatical incompleteness and misspelling problem. In more detail, uh, syntactically, almost half of the sentences are incomplete, and many words are not in, uh, in lexicon. Semantically, there are also problems like word ambiguity, synonymic phrases, and abbreviations. And contextually, unrelated related document paths could generate a lot of noise. So given those challenges, what are the solutions? Now let's review the literature and see uh, and look at the uh, project research methodologies. A typical method used here is called sublanguage analysis, which is based on the observation that um, technical documents in a specific field usually utilize only a subset of grammar and vocabulary in natural language. Therefore, we don't have to always use the, uh, the full language grammar and vocabulary for the data processing. And instead, it is possible to take the domain knowledge to define a sub-language with limited vocabulary and special defined subgrammars. Actually, both the uh, early and recent approaches that based on the uh, uh, sub-language analysis use this uh, similar kind of common diagram in the systems. When a text is imported into the system, it is firstly parsed or categorized by subgrammar and lexicon. And then the past information will be put into the regularization component um, based on the, a set of mapping rules. The regularized semantic unit will finally be encoded into structured encoded form based on the designated format. And the the major difference between early and recent approaches lies in the definition of the subgrammars. Early approaches focused on synthetic parsing. A uh, typical project is called a uh, linguistic stream project, in also called LISP. And the recent approach instead focused on semantic information and their relationship. A typical project is called MEDLI, medical language structuring and encoding. So uh, the current research has uh, uh, achieved a lot of accomplishments in the real-world applications. Um, uh, for example, some of the systems have already been integrated into real electronic medical record systems and health evaluation systems for radiology and, um, and mammography report findings, hospital discharge summaries, encoding of uh, hospital admission diagnosis, passing of uh, progress notes, and so forth. And the uh, evaluation reports found that the use of uh, such information uh, extraction component has shown to uh, improve patient outcomes as measured by reduced cost of treatment and loss of stay in the hospital. 
However, even the most up-to-date systems still have limitations. For example, they still need to reduce the redundancy and non-important information. They still need more robust error handling, more efficiency in parsing, and more knowledge base. And uh, other than the uh, sub-language-based analysis approach, there are other uh, alternative research activities and some other um, proposed f uh, future directions. For example, some researchers uh, are proposing to uh, uh, classify narrative data based on compute vocabulary, controlled vocabularies. And also, some researchers even claim that uh, since the free text of uh, uh, the clinical narratives usually have the problem that uh, they are difficult to uh, for further na uh, natural language processing. Why not avoid to use such an um, um, annoying format at, at first place? Instead, use the uh, form-based narrative data input. And um, so there are a lot of uh, database uh, um, data input uh, interfaces uh, developed systems, and also. Um, there are the future uh, directions proposed by researchers. For example, the temporal analysis. The capability of doing temporal analysis over uh, clinical narratives would help us to capture the findings, uh, like how the uh, patient's disease evolve over time. And also, of course, there is a great value of adapting the uh, techniques into languages other than English, so that we could get uh, wide applications in more countries. And. Uh, Finally, uh, I'll wrap up with my personal insights and reflections. Uh, I found that there are actually more open questions in CS area to be addressed. For example, there are trade-off between structured data input and the freedom of uh, expression. Of course, structured, uh, structured data input could be easier for the computer to recognize and for further processing. However, they lose the, uh, uh, the, the richness and the complexity about the information. And uh, instead, um, the freedom of expression will um, make, make the uh, clinical information more complex. However, they are harder to process. So when we are designing a uh, user interface for inputting the clinical data, there is a um, big issue about how to balance the trade-off. And also, there is a trade-off between domain-specific and comprehensive approaches. Domain-specific approaches uh, would make the system easier to implement, and they could uh, capture high-accurate da high data uh, from the narratives. However, they are not very adaptable. And uh, instead, as for the uh, uh, comprehensive approaches, they could make the system more powerful in capturing more findings. But the problem is that these kind of systems are not and easy to maintain, and uh, it's uh, also very hard for uh, error handling. Also, there are issues about integrating controlled vocabularies into sub-language-based extraction systems. As mentioned in previous slides, some researchers are trying to uh, use the controlled vocabularies for uh, data classification. So when we are trying to integrate that method into our previous sub-language-based uh, extraction systems, um, there are uh, good benefits because uh, the extracted data could be more active, more effective, and those kind of data could uh, reduce ambiguity and redundancy. However, even the uh, controlled vocabularies themselves still uh, have problems. They are not mature enough, and the vocabularies um, there is a big mismatch between different vocabularies, and there is still larger disagreement between the vocabularies and extracted data. And finally, there are also evaluation problems. The biggest issue is that it is very difficult to compile between systems, and it's hard to share ac uh, across research sites because of uh, the uh, privacy and confidential confidentiality issues uh, um, well, uh, often happen with the uh, patient clinical data. So our final conclusion is that um, for the researchers, there is still much left to be uh, explored. Uh, so these are my references, and thank you very much for your attendance. Um, so any questions or comments? So you said that um, the instead of translating the narrative mm -hmm. into uh, mm -hmm. structured data, yeah. why not have a system to let the uh, doctors input the data yeah. instead? Yeah. Are, are the doctors accepting that, or is it still working? Um, like just I mentioned in. 
um, here there is a big trade off between the structured data input and freedom of expression. Of course, there are a lot of uh, uh, interface systems that allow the, uh, the, the doctor to input the data. And uh, the problem is that even the most updated and mature systems could not capture all what the document wants to say. So uh, there's uh, uh, even more complex situations that the doctor have to, uh, to explain. So that's why we, we also still need to allow the freedom of expression to be more powerful. What do you see as the promising direction mm -hmm. to carry this re research to its fruition? Like what's the, where do you see the direction for research for the future? Uh, the research, um, I, th I think um, they are, the, the, for the future, there are uh, such uh, directions, and also some of the, uh, the open problems as I addressed in my uh, insights and reflections. Um, like say, uh, we, because uh, the, even the most mature systems could not uh, uh, capture the, the really high accuracy of the data, and those data are supposed to be applied directly to the patients. So uh, there are maybe like uh, five or 10% of data always could not be, cash and be be captured correctly. So how much work we still need to do to make 100% correct? That's a big issue. Go yeah. back to that previous slide with the uh, temporal. Mm. Yeah. Uh, explain to me, what do you mean by temporal analysis? I didn't get that out of uh, Temporal analysis is to uh, uh, to understand, like for example, how the disease evolves over time. So uh, uh, the patient specific data would be, you know, uh, different from, from time to time, the, the disease could develop. So uh, if we just, uh, uh, just look at only the individual facts, it may not really make sense uh, about the, the whole picture in history. But you're looking at a narrative, yeah. of, let's say of a diagnostician, a radiologist. Yeah. How do you use temporal analysis? Are you saying compare this to previous? Uh, yeah, uh, both inside individual narratives and also compare the current one to previous one. So you think there may, might be temporal information within the narrative? Yes. I think that would be unusual in diagnostic imaging reports unless mm -hmm. there was comparison to the previous. But, uh, yeah. For the patient, for the patient specific data, usually each time when the patient goes to the hospital, there is an update about his information. So uh, we could look at the history of yeah, yeah, the specific. Yeah, previous. But yes. Within the document, I found that uh, as, mm -hmm. as being questionable. Um, the other, um, well, I guess that's about it. Have you looked at all at uh, the work of um, Sircone, uh, Nick Sircone on this, in this area? Nick Sircone used to be the chair of mm -hmm. computer science here. And one of the areas he works in relates to this with Pilato, whose name I don't remember. So there's maybe some even some local work that was done that might be of interest here. And, uh, they're actively pursuing this. I guess the other thing I want to ask you is, uh, I noticed you brought up um, some different people, Hirsch and uh, uh, Smino, and before that was Friedman. Mm. Are they actually doing, uh, at uh, Friedman's facility, are they doing the analysis of the uh, narratives there? Is it done commonly? Uh, actually, uh, I think some typical work was done by uh, the Friedman and some other people. They developed like Medley and other systems, and that's for very, almost very, very common use in real hospitals. Are they using yeah. it at the hospital? Themselves? Yes. They yeah. Are. Okay. So there is a, 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 back, a, a history of work on this. Yeah. Do you have any idea of the results of evaluation, like if the system does a narrative mm -hmm. extraction and uh, a human does an Arab extraction, mm -hmm. how they compare? Um, actually, uh, they just com compare wh whether the, res the results are, are great or not. And usually for the, uh, uh, the, the computer uh, extracted the, the narrative data, they also have like recall and precision, such kind of uh, evaluation measures. How do, they, how do they compare though? Do, do you have any numbers? For your, uh, um, uh, yes, there are lots of com comparisons for the uh, Medley system. As far as I remember, for the uh, like radiology report, um, it sounds like only about three percent of disagreement between the the, the manual re result and the uh, the ultimate result. Yeah. And so. if you'll put that in your final 
yes. material because I think that would be very interesting. Yeah. Excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you.